My friends, back at it with another video to break down compression, but with a different instrument this time. We went through this with guitars, which only makes sense that we do the same thing for vocals, right? Compression at its most basic form always has the same goal, but there are different types of compressors that tend to sound better on specific vocal types with different settings depending on many factors. Well, don't you worry, because by the end of this video, I'll have broken down the most use case applications for different types of compressors on vocals, as well as some starting point settings to make it easy to understand. I'll even be using a couple examples from my own upcoming releases, and I appreciate those that were asking about all that too. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST, and I produce, mix, play guitar, etc. but at the end of the day, I'm a vocalist, man. And on top of that, a vocalist that sings in many genres, rap, rock, R&B, trap, pop, like you name it and I can guarantee I've done it. And from doing this for so many years, I've realized that when you start getting picky, there is never a one size fits all for compression. If you remember nothing else from this video, just keep this one thing in your brain. The softer the song, the softer the compression type. The more aggressive the song, the more aggressive the compression type. Different compressors are suited for different vocal styles and you really start to notice this when you're going in and out of studios. It goes for metal, rock, R&B, trap, indie, Specialized studios don't usually have a million compressors set up, just their go-to that works 99% of the time. Maybe it's a distressor or CO1B or 1176 or a plugin because that's what gets the job done for them. Well, let's get this knocked out starting with hard rock music. When I think of rock these days, I sort of just default to Bring Me The Horizon because it's a melting pot of the rock genre. Rock in general kind of lands itself in the middle. You know, not the most aggressive music, which lends to its ability to go mainstream, need less now than in the past, and it's far from the softest. This genre does extremely well with FET compressors. You'll typically see either a Blackface 1176 or a Distressor in Blackface mode used when it comes to rock these days. Think Dan Lancaster on his Nail the Mix session or producers like Chris Crummett and Eric Valentine. Safe settings on this are attack set to four and release at seven. That goes for the hardware and the software. Let's take a listen to that. Someone so hollow Cause I'm empty And you're shallow It's our only common ground And you sent me To a spiral I guess I'm going down Empty And you're shallow It's our only common ground And you sent me And if you want to test out compressors on the same vocal, just go in the description below and download the session. You know, it's in Reaper. Onto our next genre and how to compress it. Metal music. When it comes to metal, we tend to still love a FET compressor, but more so than rock, we want it even grittier. So you'll tend to notice people using the Blue Stripe 1176. It's a spittier take on a FET compressor that gives added harmonics and overall more distortion to the vocal. You'll typically see this being slammed with compression, so you can ignore that few dB rule, you know? All the way to 20 dB of gain reduction still can work. And since we brought up Bring Me The Horizon, when Frederick Nordstrom mixed Bring Me The Horizon, he used a blackface, but he added distortion afterwards because he wanted to add some grit after the fact since it wasn't enough for the style of vocal when they were much heavier. Sometimes even smashing your compressor is required to get that in your face sound that you want to hear, especially in harsh vocals. But that's not the only thing I need you to smash. That subscribe button, notification bell, and like button could all use a little abuse. So make sure you get on that because my transition game is still crazy. Back to compressors. Medium attack at four to five and release at seven is always a simple way to go. With a four to one or eight to one ratio for clean vocals or even up to 20 to one for screams. But if you don't want to think too hard into ratios and settings, you can use something like Howard Benson vocals, 
which takes all this thought process out of it for you, giving extremely pinned compression for a vocal quickly. And if you love how that compressor sounded, make sure to grab your copy of Howard Benson Vocals today by heading to the link in the description below. And the harder you compress, just be aware that a de is most likely in your future. As far as pop, trap music, and hip hop goes, typically a lot less aggressive than other genres when it comes to vocals, unless you're Takashi69. And overall, smooth compression is preferred here and usually transparency reigns supreme over color. Opto compression just wins out in this area, and the favorite in the studio these days is none other than the CL1B. Yeah, I don't have one of those. They're like $4,000. Like I said, completely transparent, overall smooth compression. I always suggest when it comes to these to use a four to one ratio, attack and release at like two o'clock, but to not really push it past five dB of gain reduction. You don't want to introduce artifacts and it's not the type of compressor that starts to add color once it's pushed very hard. Every you pretend, but girl, I know you very well. She perfume and fake clothes, but you wear it well. Instagram stories are more like fairy tales. I'm here to help. I'm gonna slide text into your dams. Your man gonna see him, but you just as BM. So I'ma keep shooting AM to the PM. I would hate to be him, but sometimes it is what it is. I know those kids are just kids, don't ever miss. Once again, if you're confused with settings and want simplicity, you can use something like JST Bus Glue Vocals Transparent, which as you guessed, can give you a smooth, transparent vocal or even bouncy mode. Both of those are optical compressors. Ariel, you pretend, but girl, I know you very well. Cheap perfume and fake clothes, but you wear it well. Instagram stories are more like fairy tales. I'm here to help. I'm gon' slide text into your DMs. Your man gon' see him, but you just as BM. So I'ma keep shooting AM to the PM. I would hate to be him, but sometimes it is what it is. Now, when it comes to R&B vocals, you would want to use something opto once again, but maybe not something like a CL1B. Where the CL1B is very transparent, you would want something very colorful on an R&B vocal. And what reigns supreme here is something like the LA-2A. Much warmer sounding and definitely something that adds a flavor to the track. That's what was extremely popular in the 90s when trying to give some extra sauce to a vocal. And the beauty of these opto compressors is there's no settings to mess with anyways. The 3dB rule has always worked wonders for me here and I have never had much issue with it. If you start pushing this compressor too hard, you can ruin it while tracking, fair warning. The way that it ducks can be pretty jarring when people are belting in the middle of a performance. If you'll be my rock, I'll build a castle. And I'll hold you close so no one can have you. You'll be my rock, I'll build a castle And I'll hold you close so no one can have you And I know who you know, nobody has to About our future, but I wouldn't put it past you Ah, uh, but I almost forgot one. Soft rock. When it comes to soft rock, the go-to is a VCA compressor, like the SSL channel strip compressor. One thing you may have noticed is that people use this channel strip in heavier genres, but what you might not have noticed is when they do, they typically add saturation to the vocal afterwards. That's because a VCA is incapable of adding distortion to the signal due to the IC chip. Soft rock vocals don't typically need a ton of hair on them, so it's enough to just add the VCA and call it a day. If you need some simple VCA love, just go to Blend on JSD BG vocals, you know. That kind of has all the things you need. So we've gone over how to compress vocals with settings and which genres they do their best work in. And with this knowledge under your belt, it will be extremely easy to know what compressor to go to and what settings to apply for a starting point 
no matter what kind of vocal you're dealing with. Do you guys feel as though I missed anything? Who out there is using a very mu on vocals or reaches for an 1176 on a trap song? Let me know in the comments below and I will chat with you fine people like I always do. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time, and tap that bell for notifications so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, I am out of here. And I'm kind of out of SM57s because I've dropped so many of them. Sure, hook me up. Hook your boy up, man. I've been out here repping y'all since day one. You know what I'm saying? I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>